Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and I'm back with a new tutorial. Just want to show you guys how to easily create hair particles in Blender using physics. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to start with an empty scene and I'm going to create a Suzanne model. So mesh and monkey. And then we're going to add a quick subdivision surface to this. So go to your modifiers properties, add modifier, subdivision surface, and let's apply this. So just click the drop down and then click apply. And what you can do is you can right click on the model, shade smooth, just to get a nice smooth model in the viewport and also your render. And uh, next we can go to the particle properties panel and then click the plus and then select hair to create your hair particles. So first of all, you'll see that it's not looking, it's looking interesting, but it's not really what we want. So first let's go to our render properties um, on the side and let's go to hair and then just change this to strip and this will change it so it looks a bit better in the viewport. Next we need to create a vertex group so we can tell Blender exactly where on the model we want to have our hair particles. So with our model selected go to your object data properties here on the side and let's go into edit mode. So I'm going to press tab and that's going to switch into edit mode. Now let's create a new vertex group by clicking on this plus right here and you can give it a name, you can double click and you can call it hair or anything you want. So I'm just going to rename that there and then I'm going to press 3 to switch over to face select and I'm going to select some of these faces right at the top of our model and then with those faces selected I'm going to press control plus to just increase the face selection. Something like that we can maybe add some of these faces here at the back as well. Now with these faces selected and with your hair vertex group selected, click on assign to assign these faces to this vertex group. Now you can test it, just click off anywhere to deselect these faces and then with this hair vertex group selected, click on select. And that's just going to tell you that our vertex group is set up correctly, so that's all good. So I'm going to press tab to go out of edit mode and let's go back to our particle settings. So scroll down all the way until you see vertex groups and where it says density, click and select the uh, vertex group that we just selected. And now you can see that our hair is only growing from those faces that we have selected or that we have created inside of that vertex group. So next we can decrease the number of hair particles. Currently we are using 1000, that's a bit overkill. So let's bring this down to about 500. Uh, we can probably drop this to about 200 even because we're going to create some child particles that will increase the number um, of hair particles. So let's bring our length down to about 2 meters. Um, I don't know why it's 2 meters because this is not really 2 meters but let's just bring it down until you are happy with the results. And uh, we can also increase the segments maybe to around 8 just to give us some more flexibility. So next we're going to go to the render section and enable B spline and you can also increase the steps here to about five. This will also just give you a better looking hair particle. Now let's go to viewport and let's increase the strand steps to around five here as well. So we get something that's accurate in the viewport as well as our render. So we can kind of see what's going to happen in the render. Next we can go to children and we can click on interpolate it and here you can set the amount of children particles you want. So let's set this to about 20. So that means it's going to have 20 hair particles for each of our 200 um, parent particles. So you can change the amount that's being displayed in the viewport as well as being displayed in the actual render. But I'm going to set them both to 20 so I get um, the final results in the viewport. You can also change the length right here, but I'm going to kind of leave this. Yeah, let's leave this at one for now. And you can also play around with these settings, the parting, clumping, roughness and kink. So parting will give you something that looks a little bit so it's not all exactly um, in the same location. It's kind of parting and it's kind of forming these little clumps. So that's pretty nice. And you can play around with these others and see what they do as well. And then under hair shape, this is where you can increase the root diameter of your hair. So you can see if you want to have thick hairs, you can increase the diameter of the root and you can also change the diameter of the tip. So I'm just going to play around until I have something interesting. Okay, let's 
minimize these sections and let's see what else we can do here so next we can enable hair dynamics and under hair dynamics let's increase the quality steps to around 10 to give us better quality dynamics and under collisions you can also increase this to around five you can play around with these settings and see whether or see where you will actually get the quality that you need um, just remember if you increase any of these quality steps your simulation will run a little bit longer and um, let's just see what happens if i press space to play this so currently you can see the hair particles are going through our model and you can also see that some of them are quite stiff they're not really bending as easily so first of all we can change the stiffness of the hair under the structure here under the hair dynamics so currently this is set to 0.5 and i'm going to bring this down to 0.1 now we'll see the hair is much more kind of flexible but as you can see it's still going through our Suzanne model so let's go back to the first frame and select your Suzanne model go to the physics properties tab and then just enable collision on our Suzanne model now if we play this back you'll see that the hair is actually interacting with our model and it's not falling just straight through the model which is great so there are quite a few other settings that you can go and change here but these are the basics you can obviously go through here and play around with some of these other settings and see how they affect the hair but let's see how we can add some interesting materials to our hair so i'm going to click on the shading workspace right here at the top and let's just zoom in here so we can see our model a little bit better and first of all let's create a base material for our monkey so i'm going to click on new and let's just call this base and we can make this any color you want let's maybe make this blue and then we're going to create a new material for our hair so i'm going to click on this drop down click plus and then click new and i'm going to give this material a name i'm just going to call this hair like so and let's just give it a color for now let's just make this green and now with our model selected i'm going to go back to our particle settings go to render and then next to material just select the hair material that we created so now you can see we have our green hair strands so something interesting that i usually do with um, creating some stylized looking hair is i create a new node and i search for hair info and then i also create a uh, color ramp node and i place that in between and then what you do is you take the intercept and put that into the factor of the color ramp and then the color into your principled bsdf shader so now you can see you can actually create a gradient on the hair particles so i'm going to change this from linear to b spline just to create a smoother gradient as you can see there and we can change the color so i can click on the white little um, arrow and i can click on this white color at the bottom and i can make this anything i want let's make this red and there you can see we have the black gradient going to red and you can obviously add some more colors here so i can click on the plus and i can select this one and i can make this let's say yellow and maybe let's just bring this further in now you can see we have black yellow and red so you can play around with these and see what you can create i'm going to remove this one in the middle and just have black going into a red color maybe something like that okay let's quickly add some keyframes to our animation so i'm going to select the suzanne model and just on frame number one press i and then select rotation to create a rotation keyframe and then let's go to frame 50 and rz to rotate on the z axis press i and create a rotation keyframe let's go to 100 and then rz and let's rotate him the other way press i and rotation again so now we have these three keyframes now let's go back to frame one by pressing shift and left arrow and under our particle settings i'm going to expand cache and here you can actually cache your simulation or bake your simulation so all you have to do is press the bake button and wait a few seconds okay let's play this back i'm going to change over to material preview 
and let's press space. And that's how easy it is to create hair particles in Blender that interacts with physics. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please consider subscribing if you like quick tutorials like this one. You can also join our Discord server, just have a look in the description below. And you can also pre-order my Blender book that's coming out soon. Information is all in the description. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.